Welcome to a new episode of Skillet's World. And I'm joined here with somebody special. He's a very talented musician turned voiceover actor. This gentleman has worked with brands such as Nike, uh, Samsung, Cable 2 Extra, uh, ASOS and the BBC and many, many more that we will get into today. He goes by the name of Joe Phoenix Troy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for Scala. joining me, man, bro. Yeah. Listen, uh, before we even kick off, man, I just want to just toast to you because <laughs> I've known you for a hot minute. Yes, I, a, very I, long time. a lot of people who probably yes. know the two of us probably don't know that we mm -hmm. know each other. Yeah. Um, we went back, we go way back into college days, uh -huh. Sir George Monarchs. Um, yes. how, how, was, how, how, is, how has it been uh, from the trajectory of your life from then to now in terms of what you were studying at the time to what you thought you might be to what you've actually become? Um, I think it's kind of come full circle, mm. actually. Like, back then I was in college not knowing what I wanted to do, just going with the motions. Well, I was actually doing media, media studies, as most people just did anyway, default. But um, yeah, I just did it just to go with the flow because something to do. But um, I'd done a year. And then when I started my BTEC, yeah. um, I'd done a, maybe half a year with that. And then I just was like, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. done with education. It's not for me. Um, even though I don't know what I want to do, it's just, I, I just, I, I can't do this. So right. I left and then I think my first, I just got into work. I don't know how I landed jobs, but I got work. And then um, I started at PPL. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Phonographic, phonographic Performance Limited. And you know, that kind of was music orientated. So it was, I've always been in and around audio and music kind of thing, so sure. yeah. And, and were you also always around that growing up? But was that part of your household? Or um, I think most black households is music, <laughs> you know, like um, it wasn't, none of my parents are musically inclined. It just was a thing where there was just music always playing. And I think naturally, I think the thing that got me into music was um, just being in school and friends just getting on the mic and just doing things just like banging the table and that kind of stuff and then you know and then that was a time when like 2000s is when um you know that the source and all of that and like BET and all that was on yeah. TV and it kind of yeah. made it like oh wow what is this like yeah. kind of thing so I was exposed to that stuff as well which made me want to rap and you know just be involved in music you know so we're gonna talk about your music yeah. I just, um, before we start talking about your own, your path of a music career and whatnot, what you you said you mentioned about all the influences that made you love music. Who were your guys? Who were your main guys? I know you might have met some of them. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> but who were who were your main influences to, to to be like? You know what? I'm 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 gonna give this a go. The f like the first people I heard that was like I was let's, yeah. Let's go with the first people you heard and then the, the guys that you fell in love with. Okay, yeah. do you want to hear something really ridiculously funny? Okay. So when I first started listening to hip hop, yeah, and buying music, don't laugh, but well, it's not bad. But Jermaine Dupree for some reason. Listen, no, 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 wait, no, <laughs> bro. Jermaine Dupree. Keep it real. Jermaine Dupree for some reason. I just was like, bro, bro we have I to was, keep. I would see our, you see mm. our generation. Yeah. Probably the first song we probably ever heard was Jump Jump by Chris Yeah, Cross. yeah, yeah, it's true. Like, so, um, like, we need to give a lot of respect to yeah, Jermaine Dupree, it was, bro. He's done, he had bangers back then exactly. as well. Exactly, and like, so it was Jade, so, and then it went on to Cash Money. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and No Limit, and I was just so intrigued by that, because it was so, like, obviously there different. was the, it's different, yeah. the Jay-Z's and Nas's and all that that you were aware of, but in terms of actually buying and consuming, no, those, those were the are your first guys. ones that Fair I listened okay. to. Okay, that's interesting. And then as I um, kind of figured out what I liked and what I was into, then obviously I went down the whole, you know, Jake Diller, yeah. Um, yeah, bloody, yeah, yeah. Um, what's his name? Most Def. Most Def. Um, just all of them people, you know, yeah. you know, common, the, yeah, common, all of those, yeah, Badu, yeah, yeah. And, and those were kind of the first time I was like, okay, this is me, this is what I want to make, sure. Um, because I made some crazy music when I first first started, that was kind of cash money esque, and I was okay. like, what the hell is this? Okay, you okay. know, like when you first start rapping, you got an American accent yeah. for no reason, and you're like, what? And then, um, yeah, and then 
I, yeah, and then what happened was I started making music, American accent. Then I had elders in my school. They were like, don't rap like that. Which was, at the time, I was like, why? I didn't get it. Mm. And then for the next like few months, I used to practice all the time, trying, as crazy as this sound, I was practicing rapping in my accent, right. which was a hard transition because okay. I didn't, like you you had like um, uh, Roots Maneuver and these men at the time. Yeah. But at the same time, there wasn't many English rappers that were on my radar. Um, so that's, the, I had to kind of acclimatize myself to that. And then, yeah, I just went down a whole Neo Soul backpacker vibe. And that was my vibe for a very, very long time. That makes sense. Mm. That makes sense. And that makes sense if when I hear your music, I'm like, mm. yeah, I can see those influences. Yeah. But when I say I, I can see those influences, that doesn't mean it sounds like yeah, yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. You're very much, one thing I love, I love about you is how you've always, ha, a, you were able to capture a sound that is kind of unique to you. Mm. And and you when you when you talk on the mic, it's just, I, just, it, I hear you talking, mm. you know what I mean? It's not like you trying to rap, yeah, yeah. it's just you actually just conveying yourself on the mic. Mm. So it's good. Let's talk about your music, man. Um, I actually want to, before you started off, um, before you actually formed the group um, Phoenix and the Flower Girl, yes. weren't you not doing solo projects yourself? Yes. That's what I was thinking. Yes. Yeah, I was thinking, yeah, but I can't really, I tried to find <laughs> them. I'm confusing, bro. Um, so I started off, under the name is Jolie on the venue. Right, yes. Um, and that was basically uh, from college days. When, when when was college days? What years were we they? Were, we were there like oh like old mid oh two to oh three, all the way up to oh five. Okay. Probably. So I would say Yeah, I, I was under that name probably until two thousand and thirteen. Okay. Two thousand and thirteen. And yeah, I was just it was just fun. I was doing a lot of stuff um, in Scandinavia, actually. That's where I was getting a lot of success. I was, um, do you remember VWO as I well? do, yeah. yes, of course. So me and VWO hooked up and then we kind of went on this run and we just doing a lot of songs together. He was getting a buzz, um, just making a lot of music, doing shows, yeah, doing man. the circuit. <laughs> that was good times, Doing Notting Hill Arts Club, yo-yo, yeah, 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 all yeah, of yeah. those times. And then, um, yeah, I just kind of, kept going, kept going, kept going. And then I released the album as well and and independently. And then what happened was, I, cause I was doing so much, the, the water was getting muddy with my name. Right. Okay. So if you Googled my name, I would have dance stuff come up. I would have soul stuff come up, part of R and B. It was just too muddy. And right. I was like, I need to reset. I yeah. need to start again. And hence Phoenix and the Flower Girl came. Right, Basically. awesome. I do remember when you were doing your stuff and you were always on the road and yeah. you were always doing. Cause I remember I um I must have stumbled upon. I can't I can't remember what it was. There was a, a gig, mm. and I don't even think the people that I rolled with, our intention was to like go to this gig to see okay. uh, the talent that was on stage. Yeah, I think we just rolled to this gig. Okay, and. I, re I remember, and we came towards the latter part of the end, so I think we missed a lot of the, the gigs and whatnot. Yeah. But I just remember walking in, <laughs> and, in, and in, in, the, in the crowd, there's this gingerhead kid with a guitar, oh, and he's okay. singing, and he's strumming along, and okay. there's all these women wooing over him and whatnot. Mm. And then he jumps on stage, mm. and he's like, listen, I want to get everybody that was on here earlier to come back on stage, and mm -hmm. we do a freestyle session. Yeah. And I saw you, and I saw my boy Michael Payne, yeah. And there was, a, there was a whole lot of people. Yeah, yeah. It was like a good vibe, and you were mm -hmm. all freestyling, kicking it. And I was, just, I was just happy to see you up there. And, and who, I, who, who was the gingerhead? Oh, where? of course. Sorry, <laughs> and the, the gingerhead hair artist in question is obviously Ed yeah. Sheeran. Mm. Um, did, were, were, you, were, were you and him were the, the circles? Were you so guys going to do you know what happened? Now? So me and Ed met just as maybe like I would say within six months of him getting signed. Okay. So I, I came across someone that I worked with told me to look out for this guy. Messaged him on MySpace back in the day. Yeah. And then, yeah, we, we got talking and then it kind of wasn't meant to be in a time of, it was just bad timing because obviously, yeah. you know, labels were on him and then he was just gone. And then funny enough, last time I saw him in New York and this was 2000 and... Ah, my brain. 2014? 14, okay. Uh, 2013, 2014. I saw him out there. And, no, actually, no, no, that's a lie. 
I, I was in New York, he was in New York at the same time and I tweeted him and obviously he still checked his Twitter back then. So we met up and he was actually doing something with, with um, Pharrell at the time. Yep. yep. This was when they were recording Sing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was a small world. Like it's literally, and then he bucked up with us later on and we just kicked it for a night kind of thing. But that's the last time I saw him. Okay. But um, back to that, that story you said, yeah, it was... I think back then it was just so like, there were so many events, like I'm not aware of the events anymore, but I just remember there was a there very big circuit. 100%. A lot of events um, and it birthed a lot of talent. It birthed a lot of <laughs> talent did, yeah. and it was a good way of artists to break through and yeah. do their own thing and put mm. on their own events if they wanted to. 100%. I think like back then nightclubs were so accepting of like, Yo, you want to hire out a venue? This is the yeah, thing. Yeah. And, then, and you know what I mean? Whatever yeah. happens, happens. Sometimes they'll even take yeah. a loss on the bar. Do they still have stuff like I, that? I don't know, bro. Yeah. I don't even know. Like, cause it's, I yeah. feel like it's crazy because the UK scene now, I think it's thriving more than ever. Yeah. But what happens with the nightlife stuff? Like, is it just all controlled for venues I, and festivals? Do you know festivals, what I think or? it is now? I think there's more, because of Spotify and all of this around now, I don't think you need them. And I feel That's a good the ones that do happen, they may they basically just book a show that's and sell good. tickets yeah. and that's it. That's, a, yeah, that's yeah. probably what Whereas it is. Whereas when we were doing it, it was more, we'd done that to get our name out there. Yeah, 100. To be noticed. And that um, wasn't that long ago. It wasn't. <laughs> it, it really wasn't. It sounds so late. I know, yeah, I know. it really yeah. wasn't that long yeah. ago. I remember yeah. like it was yesterday, bro. Yeah. So. Okay, wicked. And, and, and I love the fact that he, he um, Ed does strike me as somebody that will like remember you no, yeah, and doesn't like yeah, yeah. snub or like he does strike me so, like, so I'm glad that you took the time yeah. to you know to, to see you afterwards yeah. you mentioned Pharrell you, I've, I've noticed um, in where from your post way back in the day that yeah. you've bumped with him a few times you boxed with him a few times and when, yeah. when you were on tour and whatnot. Yeah. What, 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 what was his energy like every time you met him he's just and how much and how, and how much <laughs> does he mean to you by the way Cause, oh because yeah, I, I swear so, he's like one of your favourite artists yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 100%. so my like Mount Rushmore is probably JK. Okay. From Jamiroquai. Yeah, Jamiroquai, yeah, yeah. Probably like Dilla and then Neptune. Okay. That's, For that's, me. That's a nice, nice um, cool range. And then, yeah, so that actually comes from my girlfriend. She used to work in music. Okay. Um, and yeah, he, they know each other. And then every time we happen to be somewhere, all of the team know her face right because she just stands out yeah. and then he got to a point now where they notice me as well so um it literally we saw him at the monk there was a Montclair event in yep. high street kensington and um he was just walking through the crowd we were walking this way he was walking that way and he looked at us and he literally came over that's awesome and it's, and it's such a nice thing to have yeah, like yeah. yeah we bumped into him so many times he, he's invited us to shows brings us on stage sometimes like that's awesome. He's, he's really like, really cool guy. He's humble. He's down to earth. Like he'll have a conversation. Like, see so that that crazy. phrase "never meet your heroes" is it's nah, not always not I, always I, do true. You know what's funny actually? One of my my Phoenix and the Flower Girl, my first EP, right? I gave it to him in Rotterdam. We went backstage, whatever, talking for ages. Took it now, gave it to him. And then when I saw him, I can't remember where we saw him after. That was another country. He came up to me. This was like two years later. He's like, "Yo, I still got your CD in my kitchen." That's it. <laughs> was like he didn't need to say, say that, that. Like, yeah, but yeah, it's like yeah, just yeah. little things like that. Like, I love that. He just always just sticks with you. But yeah, he's good people. Um, I met Shay and Chad as well. Shay, I've got a relationship with. Chad, not so much. Chad, uh, Chad strikes me as somebody who kind of keeps himself. Yes. Yeah. 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 So. But okay. yeah, yeah, amazing. That's pretty cool, yeah. man. That's awesome. Mm. Let's talk about Phoenix and the Flower Girl, man. Mm -hmm. Like that that was a you you scoped a different sound there. You were able to to blend so many different types of genres into one. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously hip hop, uh electronic the house, yeah. dance, R and B. Uh -huh. Um first uh, first question, how did that come together? The, the the lady that the flower girl lady and yourself, how did that come together? And and the second question is when you were making that Greenhouse EP, mm -hmm. it, was an it was an album. EP. It was an EP. EP. When you were making the Greenhouse EP, did you, were, did you know you were embarking on something different and something unique? Um, so, like I said before, the Phoenix and the Flower Girl was just something that I wanted to do new. I was getting a bit bored. Of the thing is, like, it's old to us, but it's new to everyone else. 
So the Jolie and Davini stuff, again, it was kind of muddy in the water. Yeah, and I just yeah. wanted to do something different. Um, and actually, that was when I started getting... This was SoundCloud here right now. Yeah. <laughs> For my space of SoundCloud. So this was SoundCloud. So And I was getting exposed to a lot of electronic and Japanese music. Right. Um, and then what happened was I met not met i came across a guy called seho at the time um japanese producer and then we started having a relationship his english is very minimal but we were e able to communicate and then he we done a song together and that song blew up in like tokyo and tokyo all that. yeah yeah so it became kind of like this cult classic so <laughs> to speak which was kind of interesting to me and i was like okay i like this sound the best way i could I could explain it would be like glitch or like is it eight bit or twenty four eight bit, eight bit music, yeah, that eight kind bit of music, sound. Kind of yeah, sound yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, let me just freestyle I literally freestyled it, like, you know. And then then what happened was I started to see attention out there and more production people were contacting me from there. So then I said to myself, um, well not only myself but my girlfriend, um, we liked Japan a lot and I had opportunities out there. So we moved there for, we lived there for two years and I released music out there, done shows. Amazing. Toward, um, you know, just lived life. Mm. And it was like one of the best decisions that I ever made. It, it opened my eyes to so many things and it was just nice to, be around people as well that even though a lot of them didn't speak the same language, um, we were able to communicate just through music. And that's brilliant. They man. were like the thing with people out there as well. They're so giving in terms of if if I walk into a room or if I know somebody that can help you, I'm hooking you guys up. Like that's how it works out there. There's no ego about it, and that allowed me to, you know, create with people, release music make videos out there and yeah and and that's where the fitness and the flower girl and the, the flower girl's my girlfriend so she was right the, so yes. i had a feeling that yes. was your girlfriend but i didn't want to assume yeah. so, so right. she she um was doing the the visuals um she was behind i've seen the, the visuals the visuals are amazing bro um the artwork direction and i was doing obviously the music and writing and yeah it's yeah like i said it's just been it's been fun and I don't think I've I've ever really been able to know how big it is out there because yeah. it's hard um, because everything is concentrated in Tokyo and like the other major cities. So unless you're there, it's very hard to gauge how big something is. Sure. Um, right. But you know, pe people seem to enjoy the music and they listen to it. So that's the main thing, and I I enjoy it. Would you go back? Japan in a heartbeat? Well, the thing is, um, since 2012, I've been going back. Like, it's, oh, every, like year. every year. Yeah, and then right. in 2014 to 16, I lived there. Yeah. And then obviously COVID came, so we haven't been back since 2018, I think. Um, but the plan is that this year, um, we're going to go out to do some shows. We're in talks with my other project that I've set That's up amazing, out there now, um, that. which is Heathrow Haneda which is with um, a DJ out there. And that started during lockdown. Um, we kind of just sent stuff back and forth, yeah. made this album, um, which, yeah, was really big. Um, it was one of the biggest, um, the label that we signed with, it was like one of their biggest releases of the year, which allowed us to do more and yeah, this year, hopefully, we can go out there and do some shows. Oh, that's so, brilliant, yeah, bro. I, I love that, man. Yeah. And I love, I just love how different that story is. Like, mm. And it shows that like, you could just make all kinds of music and connect with all different people yeah. um, from all over the world, man. Mm. Um, what is it like working with your other half? Um, <laughs> <laughs> what is it like? Yeah. We bump heads a lot um, right. because I'm, I'm a lone wolf at heart. Um, I love people's energy. I love being around people. Yeah. But I think when it comes to creative stuff, I like to do what I do. You do what you do and it will meet up. Mm. That's how I like it. Obviously, there's sometimes where 
you have to bend and do stuff, whatever. But for the most part, it's kind of, I do my stuff, you do your stuff, we come together, just a little tweak here and there, we change it. But sometimes, obviously it doesn't work like that. And when no. it's your partner, um, you know, she's a, a very talented girl. And when it comes to some decisions, it's like, I might not like it. And then she doesn't understand why and vice versa. Right. And, but we make it work. Um, uh, has there been a situation where she said, we should do this and you were like, yeah, but then you went with it and it worked out for the best? Probably most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> most of the time, yeah. Yeah, sometimes yeah. They, just, they just know what they Yeah, they, they know. know what they're and, doing. and that's the thing. I've always, like I said, I've always been by myself kind of thing. And it's a good and a bad thing. It's probably one of, my girlfriend would say, it's probably one of my worst traits. But, right. um, yeah, it's like if I want to do something, I'll just go away and do it. And it's done. Yeah. And, and that's it kind of thing. But I'm trying to work on it. But I guess that's just me, in it. Yeah. So obviously the pandemic ha happened mm -hmm. and you, you, like you just said, you explained that you were still able to connect with people from Japan and still yeah. do projects and whatnot. But you also decided to try something for yourself, mm -hmm. which is kind of what's, I wouldn't say changed your career. F well, I think it's added to your career yeah. in terms of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So you're now doing audio voiceovers. Yeah, voiceovers, yeah. For Voice TV, acting, yeah. broadcasting, commercials, yeah. brands. You did something with Cardi B. Yeah. Uh, what was that for her, her album? Her so album? I, I do a lot of work with um, Atlantic and Warner Amazing. regarding their like releases and stuff like that. So anytime something's been released, they just call me and I just do it for them. But and they'll send you like a script. Script, yeah. And then you have so, to read yeah. up the script. Yeah. And, then, and that and that, that will be you announcing something. Yeah. Like so advertising. yeah, they'll give me the script and then depending on what platform they use it on, they'll just Amazing. edit it and put it on whatever. Yeah. yeah. And you could do that at your home. You don't have to worry about yeah, going so to a studio. Depending on who the client is, obviously True. some clients are like, we're spending X amount of money, so we want a proper studio. Like, you know, right. so I have to get out of my house. Right. I, to, <laughs> <laughs> like, I have to go on the train. I have to get out of my house. And then, and then go to so all, the, all the studios are in Soho. So it's not that. That's not that bad. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, not yeah, that bad. Yeah. But it's like literally, the last time I had to go to a studio, it was literally a 10 minute job. Right. I was like, I could have done this in my house. Yeah. But but money must be a decent still, Yeah, 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 so, yeah I can't know. complain. But yeah, the, it came around in lockdown, literally. Um, and it's something that I was looking at doing the year before, but I didn't, I put it to the side. And then, and with, with, with I, lockdown, don't know, I don't know what happened. It was literally like, I was at home, not doing anything. That's what happened. And I was like, I'm gonna buy some equipment. Yeah. And literally, I don't know what came over me. Like, I just, I'm gonna buy the equipment, called my friend up, was like, what shall I buy? He told me to buy this. Um, and then the first thing I did was, had to make a demo. I literally just downloaded some random scripts. Literally, I made it myself. And then sent it to him, he edited it, put some music behind it. And then I uploaded it to Fiverr. And then, Literally, we've been like by this was like May, and by December, I was like living, mad. Mad. yeah, that's <laughs> but, mad. Uh, but that's and then once that started happening, then I realized there's potential in it and there's an actual business behind it. And then that was like the, the learning process of getting agents and stuff because obviously, you can't just have a career through Fiverr, like sure. that's just one, yeah, avenue. So I thought, okay, this is Fiverr, I need to get agents and stuff so I can get the bigger jobs and do the computer games and do this and do that. And that's kind of, yeah, where the snowballers ended up up here now, you know? So you just said computer games, like, I'm assuming you voiced some stuff for computer games that has not been released yet. Yeah. And <laughs> what about ones that has been released? Okay, so because I've been doing this, the things with, because I haven't been doing this for long, um, the games I've worked on were maybe recorded a year or two ago. Okay. Which means they haven't been released yet. So you can't talk so about it. So I can't talk yeah, about it. Yeah, no, I understand but, that. I get but that. But they take a long time. Yeah, for sure. Ugh. Yeah, for but sure. But they, they're, they're fun. They're hard work. Very hard work. I can imagine, like, yeah. The, the amount of shouting and stuff you ha like, you don't realise how, like, obviously your your how much energy? muscle. It's yeah. like, it yeah. tires. Like, I remember I done one before, um, what's it called, at Christmas time. 
this was like the last job of the year and it was like a three hour session and I had to do some voice that was deep and so I'm like contracting all the time and it's like I, the next day I thought I was going to record <laughs> bro my voice was not working it was not and yeah. it's just little stuff like that you take for granted and yeah. it makes you realise that you have to take care of yourself as well and you know like just the whole drink and hydration and warming up and all of this stuff yeah. like, it's a real thing like, yeah 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 Yeah, definitely. have some water in you bef- like maybe two hours yeah. before yeah, you it's, call it's, you it's, a, it's a all day thing like you literally have to guzzle water all the time Mad. like if I've got a big session tomorrow I can't do certain things that the day before I can't go out can't shower like the funniest thing is I don't talk to my mum um, a day before a big session. You don't my mum's deaf as hell. Okay. So it's, and you know black people just like shouting for no reason. <laughs> like, they're, they're, I'm standing right this close to you. She'll shout at me the whole time talking. I'm like, what's wrong with you, man? Like, stop talking to you. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Like. So just little stuff like that. So, like. so you're making sure you're putting some rules in you place. You have to, you have to. That you don't mash up your voice again. Yeah, like. that, that's, that's pay the bills, man. So I can't. Yeah, well, that respect. That, that's yeah. brilliant. So I'm a... I'm assuming video gaming is probably your the funnest, the fun, the most fun you have with 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 audio recording. Or no, maybe not. Yes, it's the most fun in terms of it's different. You don't get to do them often, so when they come around, it's kind of like, oh, this is cool. But yeah, for true. me, I think for me, it's like working with certain brands on certain campaigns. And then you get to input a bit as well. I think I like when I get to be myself, um, which is one of the reasons why I, I kind of put off getting into voiceover, which is weird, because I thought that I couldn't do it because of the way I sounded, which okay. is weird. Yeah, I, but yeah, it's I'm like I, because that. I just always thought that people that do voiceover speak. Yeah, a certain way. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And I hate to say that, but that's just what I was told. You don't. Speak, you, you're quite articulate yourself. You know that, right? You're not like. I don't. You're well, not a well, well no, 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 no. Yeah. But but compared but, to certain <laughs> man, I know what you're saying. I mean, like, compared I, to some. Certain, I've been yeah. in sessions before where they tell me that they'll they'll have a go at me because I'm not pronouncing th. Yeah. And then, and I'm like yeah. sitting there. I'm like, what do you mean? I didn't even know this was a problem until I got into bo. But. Yeah, I, I I can relate to that. Yeah, because I I happen I have issues with pronouncing th sometimes. Or, it's a London thing, though. Yeah, 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 I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good point. I didn't no, I didn't even think of that. And it like we'll say it as an F. <laughs> yeah, four, like, like four, the, like the number number. So that's this is a funny one. So I done a campaign for something, and instead of saying the number three, I was saying three. Yeah. So yeah, I was saying I in the campaign, well. I was making it sound like the product was free. free. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. they were like, See, that's the problem, they were like, no, you need to. And, and then in my head, I was like, okay, I, when there's a number three, and I, I say it the way that they want it. I say it with a TH because I've trained myself to do it. But it's when it's though. just talking. Yeah, random, especially around Mandem yeah, yeah, as well. I can't. You don't care. <laughs> I can't, yeah. No, um, I hear you. You know what, that's, that is such a good point because mm. it kind of like put into perspective like, how much work you need to put in mm. in for yourself to yeah. make this to execute it really well yeah um so because you can't talk about some things that you've worked on mm-hmm. that you know yes yeah. um can you mention a favorite job that's already come out that you can talk <laughs> about <laughs> um damn it just shows you how much you've done that's the thing with voiceover though. It's like you literally, just, you do a job onto the next, yeah. onto the next. So you don't even think about it. Because sometimes they don't even come out. So oh, it's like, as that, yeah. all you care about is you getting paid and yeah. then you move on. Yeah, like, yeah, Because yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, yeah. I've done, um, I've done something for, you know, the film Raya Lane. Yeah, Raya Lane, yeah. yeah. Um, I've done the audio description for oh, wow. some of that, which was cool. Um, that was something I'd never done before, which was kind of like, oh, this is interesting. So that was cool. Um, I would say, I think it's it's just, I think sometimes when I get some like, I've done something for Nike. Yep. Nike? Yeah, Nike. Yeah. yeah. 
because uh, the Americans. Yeah, they tell me they, like, <laughs> like, they actually told me to say Nike, but um, I've done something for Nike, which is cool. It was for the. Um, it was like a tour within their campus, so okay. it was like an audio tour. Okay. Um, and I can't remember if it was based in the Netherlands or it was in America. I can't remember. That was cool. That was different. Um, yeah, and then there's there's some some of the ones that I want to talk about. I can't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That are, they're, they're yet to come out. But yeah, like I said, I like doing jobs when I can be myself. Would yeah. you? Um, what would what advice would you give people that want to get involved in in voiceover work like what you're doing right now? Just do it. And don't, I, don't overthink. Honestly, I overthought it. Maybe if I started years before, I might not be here now. Sure. But I think. Yeah, just do it. I think, especially now, I think since the pandemic, it, um, there's a lot more resources and stuff mm. online. Yeah. Because I think since then, there's been an upshot. Like a lot of theatre actors went to voiceover. A lot of actors went to voiceover. Musicians went to voiceover because everything stopped. That's a good point. So I think, you know, there's a lot more resources out there and you there's a lot more representation out there so i think it's easier to get into it okay um don't get me wrong it is hard um you either can or you can't do it but at the, at the same time just to get your foot in there i think just do it just make a demo literally go through it and see what happens and what about would you ever lend your voice to acting like for instance i mean do you do acting have you ever done any acting I've not done on-screen acting. I've done obviously voice, voice acting. acting. Yeah, yeah. So you've done voice of acting. Yeah. That, that, would that would you, what I mean by that question is if somebody was to say to you, "Hey, Joe, I really like your voice, and we want you to be part of this animated series that we're doing." Have you done anything like that? I've done animated. Oh my goodness! Yeah, so you yeah, have yeah, done yeah, something. Like yeah, that. yeah, I haven't done. I've done one, and that's one of the ones you can't so, talk about. So what I've done, I've, I'll tell you what I can. What I've done is it's a game. Yeah. But with the game in the the universe, they've got animations as well. Okay. So right. if you know, so done. if if people know, they know. I didn't. I don't know anything about this game until okay. I knew of this game, but I didn't. I've never played it. Okay. That's what. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what, <laughs> trying to figure out what game this is. <laughs> but mm. um, yeah. So. Okay. Pokemon. No, I'm joking. Yeah, I, wish. <laughs> I wish, bro. I wish. You probably just have to say if you were, if you were actual Pokemon listen, itself, you just went Joe, Joe. Bro, that, you know I wish I don't Hey man, listen, keep going. You never yeah, know. Yeah, you but, never um, know. Yeah, the and yeah, the animated stuff. Um, the, something that I haven't done yet, which I want to eventually do. I'm sure I will. Is the motion capture stuff. Yeah, that'd be yeah. sick. That'd be dope. I, I haven't yeah. been able to get into that yet, but um. So you have this unique voice that you've you 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 put into music mm. that's transcended into voice mm. over work. Um, where am I going with this question? You had a unique voice. Yeah, uh, now you're, this is what I'm going with the question. Now you are pushing that to podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> You've started a podcast. Yeah. And it's about voice over work. Yeah. And, uh, like, so is it a case of the daily routine of what you have to do? Or is it just giving people advice about it's, getting involved it's, in it's it? It's literally, so I wrote an ebook at the beginning of 2020, I think of 2022, I, I, time escapes me. Yeah. But I wrote an ebook, um, basically giving you a step by step on what you need to do to get started. Right. And in that ebook, there's links of equipment to buy, there's links of resources to use, da 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 da, whatever. And that was the reason I made the podcast is, is because. I'm a lazy learner <laughs> yeah, okay. and at the time when I was looking, there wasn't, I wasn't coming across the resources that suited my learning style. Sure. Um, so I, w I literally want you to just tell me the basics that I need to know in order to make money. Okay. I don't care about the bells and whistles about how to perfect this and that. I don't care. I just want to know, I need the mic, I need this equipment, I need this script. This is how a recording session is going to be. This is how long it's going to take. This is where I advertise myself. Let's go. That's what I want to know. Yeah. Um, so the podcast the thing came um, after the book because the book was in okay, but I wanted to, I like to make things. So 
um, it's something that I've always wanted to do, uh, but I didn't know what about. So it kind of made sense. Sure. Because um, obviously there's so many amazing podcasts out there now. It's like I just wanted to niche it down. Yeah. Um, so it's literally kind of mirroring what the ebook does, but in audio form. Um, okay, and that's brilliant. Each, each, I think the first season is literally step by step from demos to branding to marketing to what else is there? Coaching. There's a coaching episode, and the final one is an agent's episode. So these are all the stuff you need to know about. Um, that is brilliant. And, and yeah, basically use those those to um, get to where you need to get to. Um, and then from that, there's the second one, second season, which I'm working on, which is going to explore, obviously, VO stuff still, but then go into the audio industry. Um, so just like copywriters and audio in engineers and that like is, speaking, that kind of stuff. So. That's dope, bro. I'm, mm. I'm happy you're doing that. That's actually mm. really good. Especially mm. for people who, so a lot of people like that, they just don't think they can do something. So yeah. And, and a lot of people in your position and wouldn't give back that information. Yeah. They're like the whole thing. You know what? Point. Yeah, but that's the thing. It's like, I, I've i always been that person to give back yeah. Yeah. because I, I, I always like to believe that I help you, you help me. And when we get to that place that we need to get to, we can enjoy it all together, you know? Because um, yeah. you can't be by yourself. The, the, the market changes, everything always changes. So if you isolate yourself, True. then yeah. could be by yourself. <laughs> you could be by, you yourself. Be by yeah, yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good to so help. So not good only not only am I educating others as well, but I'm still educating myself. Exactly. Um, I'm learning about parts of the industry that I didn't know how they operated before and allowing myself to maybe see, could I do that? Because there's, there's other stuff in the audio industry that I want to get into later mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a good networking tool as well. So it, it's a win-win for me either way, you know. Two more questions before we wrap yeah. up. I bumped into you at the, the podcast show mm -hmm. last year in, yeah. in 2022, in May, I think it was. Uh, that was the, I think that was the first extravaganza. And what, they might, I think they might have done stuff previously. No, that's the first one. That was the first yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. Damn, okay. Yeah. Um, it was good to see you there, man. That's yeah. when you and I reconnected. Yeah. Um, hopefully we get to see... Yes, yes. Yeah. I should be going your there own this year. Yeah, this year. I hopefully I get to see you there and, and, mm. and I'm hoping you'll be able to have your own panel. Well, I imagine. <laughs> Just keep going. You never, yeah, know. never I, know. I, I, I never would not know. be surprised if you're there. And, and lastly, you're working on a project L H R D H N D. I love that. So it's it's Heathrow Haneda. I thought so. Yeah, so but I didn't want to get. I didn't want to see. L H R H N D. Yeah, yeah. Heathrow Haneda. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And he's G G Joyal G Goyle. The, the name of the he changes his name all the time. So he he's he, Haneda. That's the guy you mentioned. So he says yeah, yeah. So he's he's. He goes by the name of Gargoyle or G Goyle. G Goyle. Yeah. And so that project, when when are we looking to have that drop? So, um, so that's the one I started in 2020. Yes. Um, and so you're gonna we, go back. And yeah. So that's what we're working on. Some more releases. Um, as and we your speak. missus is still part of that. She's not. So, so she's Venus in the flower girl. Yeah. And, and so this is Haneda totally is different. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I saw the I saw the video of the collaboration with yourself and. G, G Goyle. Yeah. And, and it was a you were playing a yeah, B yeah, yeah, and there's yeah, yeah. It's a guitarist yeah, and you were singing. Yeah, that was yeah. that was dope. So yeah, hopefully this year we're arranging some releases and some shows out in Tokyo. So, okay. So yeah, fingers crossed. Everything and you know, I never you know as long as I've known you, I I assume you're a Caribbean. Yes. What part of Caribbean are you Caribbean? So my dad's St. Lucia and my mum's Jamaican. Right, there we yeah. go. Yeah, I don't know why I never asked you. <laughs> <laughs> Now listen, I want to say toast for coming on yes, the show, man. It was you, really bro. good cracking it with thank you, bro. You. Um, please you. plug anything you want to plug uh, before we wrap up. Um, your socials. Where's the camera? This one? Yeah, then, yeah this one. Um, I'll say just check out. Go on joetroy.com. Um, everything's on there. Find my Instagram and just go down the rabbit hole and check it out. Big up Joe Choi, man. Big, big, talented person. Keep watching for him. I'm, I'm sure the voice of our work is going to get to <laughs> different heights. And you're going to hear him more and more mm. on, your, on your screen soon. Um, this has been another episode of Skillet World. Um, join us here back again uh, for more episodes and more content. I'll go by the name of Skillet. Peace. Out.